T-shirts are fun to decorate at home and there are so many ways to do it. You can personalize T-shirts with iron-on vinyl, also known as HTV, or with print then cut vinyl, also known as printable vinyl, or with screen printing like this, or with infusible ink, or with sublimation. I've done all of these, obviously, and many times over the years. Each one has its pros and cons, and I often get questions about which one of these is better, so I wanna talk about it. First, the most common type of shirt is the iron-on shirt, which we also call heat transfer vinyl or HTV. This involves cutting a heat activated vinyl into the shape we want and then pressing the shirt with the heat of a household iron or a heat press. Cutting the vinyl usually requires a cutting machine or some skill with a craft knife and you're limited to single colors or you can do patterns, right? Or you can have multiple colors if you're willing to layer. You totally can do that. Now the vinyl lays on top of the surface of the shirt uh, but if it's applied well and laundered properly, it can last about 50 washes without peeling or fading. Uh, the pros are that an iron-on vinyl shirt is pretty easy to make. Uh, the cons are that the vinyl will eventually peel and crack. It will not last forever. You can put iron-on vinyl onto any type of shirt, including cotton and polyester. And I want to give you a close-up of what this looks like so that when I talk about the vinyl laying on top of the shirt, you know. So let's move these over here. We'll look at this pretty buffalo print. This one here. This is a project from last year. Let's take a look at this so that you can see. All right, so here's our shirt. Um, it's super cute, right? This is basically like a sticker, a heat activated sticker. It feels uh, really smooth. It doesn't feel like the fabric of the shirt. And if I hold this up, let's see if I can, you can see here. I can't quite see my screen. <laughs> um, there we go. So you can see how it shines a little bit, I think. Right? There we go. You can see the sheen of it. And it's really laying on top of it. So if I run my finger down right here, I can feel the edge of the vinyl, right? It's right here, see? So it's really just hovering over the top. Now the heat activated adhesive does a pretty good job of keeping it on the shirt. Uh, and this is certainly the most popular way of making a shirt. Uh, this is the, my most popular video is an iron on vinyl shirt video, really simple basics. It's got millions of views and, it can, and I made it a long time ago and people still watch it to this day. Okay, now the second type of shirt is a printable inkjet transfer shirt, which some people call print then cut or printable vinyl shirts. Now I have one like the one that I did, but I couldn't quite find the one that I did this morning to show you. Um, I'm gonna bring up a picture of it, however, while I talk about it. So let me bring this up so you can see it. There we go. Um, it looks really similar to the one that I'm showing you here, but it's not quite the same. You see that? Okay, so this is um, a special type of vinyl that you can print with an inkjet printer, and then you can cut it out and you can press it onto the shirt. The design lays on top of the shirt, almost like a flexible sticker. The advantages of printable transfer shirts are that you can get full color without needing to layer or weed a design. You may not need to do anything other than cut it with a pair of scissors, in fact. The disadvantages are that the design will fade in the wash and the transfer can peel and crack over time. You can put printable inkjet transfers onto any type of shirt, including cotton and polyester. And this one here is uh, basically the same design, but clearly experimenting at some point, and you can see I was using glitter and I don't know if I printed on this. I can't remember. <laughs> um, so I don't want to just show you this one. But the part about how it like sits on top of the vinyl. So there's an edge here that remains the same, right? But this one's actually, it's actually glitter, not a printable vinyl. So likely I, I don't even know. I might have sublimated this or maybe I printed, I found a printable glitter transfer. I don't remember. 
but it's the same basic idea. So it's just sitting on top of the shirt. Okay. So the next category of shirt is this green printed shirt. And I have a couple of them right here. Aren't they pretty? So these are screen printed. So a screen printed shirt uses a special fabric ink that is flexible and stays um, right on the shirt for a really long time. We get the ink into the shirt just the way we want uh, or onto it and into it actually by using a silk screen with a vinyl stencil on it. So that typically also requires a cutting machine to cut the stencil. And then you lie the screen on top of the shirt with the stencil on it and you spread the ink onto the silk frame and then only the parts that you want to get onto your shirt go through the silk. You can screen print in multiple colors. You can see we've done that here. Um, you have to let the ink dry in between, right? And use a new stencil. Screen printed shirts are a little tricky to get right, but the results are really good and they last for a long time, longer than iron on vinyl, because the ink goes right into the fibers of the shirt, uh, rather than just sit on top of it like an iron on vinyl or a printable vinyl transfer. You do need to set the ink with heat using an iron or a heat press though. And screen printing is best done on cotton shirts, not polyester, though it is possible to do with some special ink. Shirts you see at the store are with designs are often screen printed. All right, so our fourth category is Cricut Infusible Ink. I have this cute little onesie here. Uh, so Cricut Infusible Inks uh, are transfer sheets that are cut on a cutting machine and then applied with high heat to a shirt. Uh, that, that you have to use a heat press, you can't use an iron. And the sublimation ink is pre-printed onto an adhesive liner, so it's great for those with cutting machines rather than sublimation printers. Infusible ink will last a long time. As long as your shirt lasts, there is no cracking, feeling, or pain, pain, um, peeling. <laughs> the biggest catch is that you need to use a polyester shirt. It needs to be white or very light colored for the transparent ink to show through. The advantages of Cricut Infusible Ink are that you don't need a sublimation printer to sublimate and you get a shirt that lasts pretty much forever. The disadvantages are that you do need a cutting machine if you want to make any custom or intricate designs. And of course, you know, you are stuck with polyester and white <laughs> or light colored, right? All right. So those are our sublimation shirts, or sorry, um, Cricut Infusible Ink. Here's another one. And Cricut Infusible Ink comes in solid colors and it comes in uh, patterns. I used a pattern on this one, okay? So this is a great option. If you really want a, so the ink goes right into the shirt. So there is no edges here. It just feels like a shirt, right? It just feels like uh, the polyester. Um, you can use polyester blends, but it has to be mostly polyester, at least 65%. But it's very, very, um, it just it literally just feels like fabric. So it won't crack, it won't peel, it won't fade unless you get it really crazy hot, <laughs> which typically, we, you know, is not happening unless you have some like super hot steam setting on your dryer or something, you know, un an unusually hot one. Anyway, so aren't they cute? Okay, so... And our last category is, let me get one out. Here we go. I have a lot of shirts here. Sublimation. So this is a sublimation shirt, one of the first ones I did actually. So the sublimation shirt requires a sublimation printer or access to one so you can uh, you know, you can actually just order a sublimation print like on Etsy or something like that. And you need high heat. Uh, but if you do have those things, a printer with sublimation ink and high heat, you can make full color shirts that last as long as the shirt. With sublimation, the ink goes right into the shirt as a gas and it stays there when it solidifies. So the result is that you only feel the fabric of the shirt, just like infusible ink. There is no layer or vinyl or ink on the shirt at all. It's inside, right? It's not sitting on top. So it's beautiful and smooth. Sublimation has been getting in popularity in recent years, and you'll find it on many shirts these days. The pros to sublimation are that you can do pretty much any design you want, pretty much. All the colors, though, 
including photos, and there's usually no weeding necessary. It's just print and press. The shirts last pretty much forever, regardless of how many times you wash them. The drawbacks to sublimation are that you need a printer with sublimation ink and a heat press. You cannot use a household iron. For most people, the biggest downfall with sublimation is really that it requires a shirt that is mostly to all polyester to work. And not everyone wants to wear a polyester shirt, right? So there are some workarounds so you can get a sublimation a design onto a cotton shirt. And I recently did a tutorial, let me show you. So this is a cotton orange shirt with sublimation on it. That's over at jennifermaker.com 432. Now it does require an extra layer of HTV. So there's a layer here, you can feel it to get that sublimation ink on there, but it does allow you to get beautiful full color uh, designs without having to like weed and layer or layer them like you might do with vinyl, right? The, the drawback is that this is still vinyl right here and my finger will still catch it as I, you know, touch it. And that means that over time it is going to peel and crack eventually, right? But there might be one more technique that will solve this problem. And that's what's known as DTF sublimation, which means direct to film. Now there are special printers that do this, but they are super pricey. Uh, you can do it at home if you use a special transfer powder. So I'm gonna go into that more next and we're gonna find out if DTF sublimation shirts are the way to go to get sublimation ink onto 100% cotton shirts. You can get the details on DTF sublimation shirts over at jennifermaker.com 446. Now here's the big question. Which of these t-shirt techniques is best? The answer really depends on what you need your shirt for. If you just wanna make a shirt that's gonna be worn lightly, iron on vinyl transfers are really easy to do and they don't need to last forever, right? If you want a full color design on your shirt, printable transfers, like this one here, um, are the way to go, right? If you don't mind that eventually it will fade and peel. Uh, if it's going to go through a lot of washes, then you want Cricut Infusible Ink or Sublimation Ink. Here it is, <laughs> right? Uh, because, oops, because they will withstand all that washing. It's just, you know, you got to have a sublimation printer or access to one to do that. All of these shirts require a heat press. Um, the iron-on vinyl and printable transfers and screen printing can use an iron, but to do the infusible ink and the sublimation, you need mm -hmm. something like a Cricut Easy Press or a heat transfer press that goes up to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And then uh, if you want a cotton shirt, you'll wanna use iron on vinyl or printable transfer. Um, or one of my tricks <laughs> to doing that, such as transferring it to HTV or trying the DTF technique. So I hope you found this overview of t-shirts useful. If you have any questions, please visit my awesome Cricut Crafters group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters or my Sublimation Made Easy group at jennifermaker.com slash sublimation group. Uh, awesome people, tons of helpful uh, advice for things. And I'm of course always happy to answer your questions. Leave them below this video and we will help you out. And in fact, I'm happy to help answer questions right now. Let me switch over to see what questions we have about t-shirts. So DTF, DTF is our project for today. <laughs> so after I answer some questions, we're gonna actually create a DTF shirt together, see what happens, and uh, then we'll decide together whether we think it's worth pursuing or not. That's, that's what it is. So DTF means direct to film. So instead of printing onto paper, we're gonna print onto a film. And I'm gonna show you how it works. So it's, this is probably new for most everybody. Has anyone here ever tried DTF? Let me know in the chat. Okay, and I see some questions. Is the deer design in my library? It sure is. Um, I don't remember what number it is, but I believe this was from last year's Merry Maker Mingle. So if you go back to there, and I think that this was 
uh, making shirts like pajamas and stuff for Christmas morning because we have like a whole bunch that are just for, uh, you know, we have ones that say mom and dad and sis and brother and stuff like that. So it's last December we did that one. If anyone remembers the number, please let me know and I'd be happy to share that. Um, what was the font used for Chase Your Dreams? I need to find that shirt. And I probably won't remember, um, but let's see if we can find it. I can at least tell you what project it's in. Okay, yep, Chase Your Dreams. This is our screen printing project. We did this in November, so just a month ago. Uh, so if you go to jennifermaker.com and search for screen printing, you'll find this. And we always put the fonts that we used if it's not hand lettered, because um, some of our projects are hand lettered. But if we used a font, we always put that right in our, either our materials list or at the bottom of our instructions so that you can always find it. Oh, and this is Bearson Dream Script. Thank you. Uh, Bearson Dream Script. And it's designed 435. Okay, um, all right. Approximately how many washes do each of these types of shirts get? Anything with iron on vinyl. Uh, so that's all of our iron on vinyl, HGV, the principal transfers, um, also the sublimation um, on cotton tricks that we do because this is also HTV. If you apply it properly to start with and you take care of it in the washing machine and dryer, you should get at least 50 washes. That does not mean that's always the case. I have not, I have definitely seen when I've made a mistake and I haven't pressed it as well, I'll start to see a little peeling. That's usually what I see. Um, the good news is that if it's a problem for me, I can just go repress it and that usually fixes it. <laughs> uh, but I would say 50 washes. After that, you'll start to see a lot of cracking and peeling or, you know, like wrinkling, right? It'll start to get like, you know, you, you won't be as happy with it and you will probably have to redo it then. The sublimation and the Cricut infusible ink on the other hand, so long as you're not um, putting it into any heated environment that's over, you know, about 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which is very hot, right? Uh, those will last as long as the shirt or whatever you put it on lasts, right? Because that ink gets right into the surface and it becomes a part of it and like essentially dyes it. And the only way it will, the dye will release is with high heat, right? So as long as your dryer is not getting over 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which I guess is possible, but I know mine doesn't. I have no issues. I can wash my sublimation shirts over like 50 plus a hundred times. I haven't washed them a hundred times, but you could, um, and it would be fine. They, the ink would not release as long as it doesn't get too hot. Yep. Okay, so did we have anybody who had ever tried DTF? I'm curious. DTF means direct to film and we're gonna experiment with it today. Uh, I don't see anyone saying that they have. If you did, I missed it, so sorry about that. One more question. Do you have a favorite brand of printable vinyl? Yes, in my tutorial that I showed you, let's let me go back to my website so I can show you. So here is the project I did with printable vinyl. Um, really a heat transfer, they really called it, they didn't really call it printable vinyl, um, but that's basically what it is. Um, this tutorial right here, how to make print then cut shirts. This has my favorite one in it, so let me scroll down. I always put all of my materials right in my blog posts and in my videos, they're always, it's always right there. So I used uh, iron-on transfer medium for dark fabrics, right? Let me see, and if you click on the link, it should take you there. Um, so, yep, Jolie's Boutique Easy Image Iron-on Transfer Paper for colored fabrics. I found that one worked the best, not the one for white, but the one for colored fabrics, okay? Um, you could use white if your shirt is white, but most of us have colored shirts, so yep. All right, so that's my favorite, this one right here. And you can find the link to it right in my tutorial called How to Make Print Then Cut T-Shirts. 